It sure does. And now it's fly from snowpack to snow melt as California's record snow begins to thaw. Flood worries deepen, and the next two months will be the most critical. A lot to get to tonight. Thanks so much for joining us here at 5. I'm Tony Lopez. And I'm Marley Ginter. Tonight, the state has released a forecast showing which areas are most at risk. The good news, there's no real threat to most of the major waterways around Sacramento. The Sacramento River, in particular, is equipped with robust flood control systems. But the San Joaquin River and watersheds further south in the valley could present a problem. CBS 13 Shantae Passmore is getting answers on the reality of the spring runoff. And Shantae, this is really uncharted territory for water scientists, right? It really, really is. But, you know, Marley, I want to walk viewers back to what we saw back in January. How could we forget about seeing parts of Wilton submerged in the water? The state says, look, there is no crystal ball to see how this runoff is going to play out, but we're being warned to be ready for anything. Better to be safe than sorry. Unrelenting atmospheric rivers brought California rain and snow not seen in years. Now that it's spring, how and when is this historic snow melt going to come down? So what we all know is the hard reality, and that is there are something like 30 million acre feet of water stored as snow in the Sierras above us. UC Davis flooding expert Nicholas Penter lays out the following scenarios. Is it going to trickle down in the next few months without problems? Or could a change in temperature, like a heat wave or more rain on snow, cause flooding? People should be concerned. There's no dire predictions, but there's certainly the potential, depending on how the weather plays out. I think that you just have to you know, prepare for whatever's coming down the road at any time. On Tuesday, the Department of Water Resources released its snowmelt runoff prediction between April and July. The American watershed in Folsom is expected to peak in May with 860,000 acre feet. Meanwhile, the Consumnes River at Michigan Bar is expected to peak at 150,000 acre feet. The state warns people should be aware, be prepared, and take action. Discretion is the better part of valor sometimes, and you can't fight water, so, you know, don't try. The only way to win the game is not to play. Yeah, you really can't fight water. You know, there's really been this push to get the warning out about rising rivers and creeks. And the state warns water levels right now are high, moving fast. It's really not safe for anyone to be in the water, especially for people looking to have fun for at least until summertime. Yeah, good point. All right, Sean Tate, thank you. More perspective now. Let's get to Chief Meteorologist Nick Marianos. Also getting answers for us tonight. Nick, give us a little more context to all this from a weather perspective. Right. Well, there's, you know, some big numbers out there thrown around. You think about the Gassumnus, you hear 150,000 acre feet. Like, wait, what? Uh, so that's for the month, right? When you break it down to the flow rate for cubic feet per second, we get about, uh, for the Gassumnus River, about 2,500 cubic feet. So when you put that uh, to where on the river chart, for instance, it's below monitor stage. So the river is going to be running high, but what we had in January was substantially more. We had flow rates close to 60,000 cubic feet per second. So uh, but there's still a lot of water up there in the Sierra that has to melt. Right now, if you melt it all down, at least at the Central Sierra Snow Lab, you have more than 76 inches of water still in that snowpack. However, as we get toward the later months, uh, you start seeing more of that. So recently, the snowpack has been cold, has been below freezing. So the snowpack has to warm up to about 32 degrees, and then the snowpack starts to melt. So as you get toward May and into June, when the daily high temperature in the valley is consistently into the 80s and 90s, well, you have a really big warm up up in the Sierra, and that's just going to uh, enhance some of that snow melt. However, uh, those numbers, those uh, expectations with the flow rates with those rivers, well, they'll be even higher if you get, say, a prolonged heat wave early on. However, the good thing is, at least in the short term, for the second half of the month, looking at temperatures averaging below average for much of northern California, that actually helps mitigate the overall flood concern for much of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys. I think the greater chance for any springtime flooding is across uh, from the San Joaquin Basin further south. Marley? Yeah, some great perspective there. Thank you, Nick.